Hi, welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover of the Auto Sleeper Wilton, which is a 2008 model. So as we start, we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. Using your habitation key, which is the small black one. You've got your header tank here, which is where you put your liquid for your flush. So get yourself a hose pipe, a jug, something to mix something in. So you'd use part pink liquid, top it up with water and then pour it into here. And that will, when you press the button on the top of the toilet, that will be your flush liquid. And below you've got your cassette. So this is where it all ends up. So lifting the yellow handle and making sure the blade's closed, you'll be able to release the cassette free of the vehicle. Then take this to your disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. Take the cap off, press the button, and tip the content of the cassette out. Then there's normally a tap, which you'd put some water in, give it a rinse, and tip out again. And then before you put it in, put some liquid in, which is either the blue or the green, and you'd use a cap full, which is 120 millilitres of liquid. Pop it into the cassette, and then you can then push it back into the vehicle and it's good to be used. Underneath you've got some storage. So opening this up, you've got some under storage here. So we've got a winding handle or the steadies. Your wheel jack or brace should I say and your jack which is in there when heating your water on gas this cover must come off to allow <coughs> the fumes out otherwise it will come up with a red light which can mean one or two things the covers on or your gas is run out or not on so hand on the top lift it off pop this in the driver's door of the cab if you left it on and it's trying to light and light, come and take the cover off, blow into the vent and it'll eliminate the build up of gas that's in there and it'll light first time. You've then got your mains connection point. So this is where you hook the vehicle up. So you get your hookah bleed, lift the end, expose the end and slide on. Always hook the van up first, then the power source and do it in reverse order when unhooking. But when unhooking in the left hand corner there's a small clip so push that down to release the hookah bleed and you've got an external tv point so if you went to a super site carry some coax with you you can use their aerial instead of yours if you are in a hard to reach place like the lakes and they offer to use in their aerial or satellite you can connect to there and connect to the bollard and it will use their aerial at the back or should i say here you do have your fresh water drain so if you're not using the vehicle for a while in the winter when you winterize it if you just open this this is just fresh water and it will drain the vehicle down of water and then your fresh filler at the back so carry a hose pipe and some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on most sites and this is where you'd fill with water if you were going wild camping you will have to take a full tank so fill it up from home and on the back, high level brake light, reverse camera, tow bar with seven pin electrics on a bumper bar so you've got some protection there so you don't hit the back of the vehicle. And then coming out the passenger side, so using the habitation key you can open your LPG locker which is your gas locker and you can fit two bottles in there so you can fit two 13s, the bigger ones, they're sixes, that's just our test bottle. And what you need to do is once you've got the bottle on board use the straps and strap the bottle in left hand thread to connect the pigtail to the bottle opposite threads with it being gas so hand tighten and then turn the bottle on and off from the top you always want to make sure that it is isolated before traveling off just for your own safety in case you were involved in any collision External gas point, so if you're using a Kadak or barbecue, instead of carrying a separate bottle, it'll use the bottle on board. But get yourself a gas spigot, spigot nozzle to clip in there. 
you'll need some Jubilee clips and some gas piping to connect it all together and then connect the other end to your gas appliance. Your fridge vents. And below you've got your wastewater drain. So again, in the winter, make sure this is fully drained off or when you leave in sight, don't travel with your wastewater. Go at the waste disposal point and crack the valve open. And this will just allow the water that you've drained down the plug hole out. You've got your own light, which I'll show you how to work inside on the control panel. And you've got your awning, which will wind out, which is flush on the top there. Electric step, so there's a switch when going in here, which operates the electric step. Passenger door, you do have your diesel filler, which opens with the transit key, so it is a lockable cap. Engine batteries underneath your cab seat. And then to open the bonnet, you'd use the transit key, pop it in the front above the badge, turn it to your left hand side first to pop the bonnet and then to release it to the right and in here you do have your brake fluid, power steering fluid, dipstick for checking your oil, oil filler, screen wash, power steering or coolant sorry in there, obviously your fuel filters at the back. Underneath this red tab is your positive as the battery is underneath the seat, this is your positive jump stopping point. And then you just earth off the engine hoist here for giving or receiving a jump start. Once inside the vehicle, this is your auto, auto sleeper 12 volt control panel. So you've got your master switch here, which turns the power on and off. 12 volt if you're not hooked up, 230 volt if you are. And you've got a power transfer button here. So this will then use the engine battery to power the living area, i.e. the motorhome habitation side. But I wouldn't advise using that because there's a design battery, i.e. your leisure battery, which is used to power the habitation side. And the two batteries need to be kept separate because you don't want to flatten your engine battery and then go to start the engine and it simply won't start. But that can be used in emergencies should you need a bit of 12 volt. You've got your pump here, so should you have enough water on board, you can turn this on and this will pressurise the water to the taps, toilet and shower. And your auxiliary switch here, you can turn that on, that is your awning light. So that is the light on the side of the vehicle, just beside your habitation door. Using the arrows you can go through, so this is the date, the temperature inside the motorhome and the control panel number which is EC200. Scroll through, you can view your leisure battery reading, your vehicle battery reading, your fresh water reading, and your waste all from here. So should you need to top up any water, i.e. your fresh, it'll alert when it gets low to tell you to top it up via a hose pipe. On the side of the wardrobe, you've got two controls. So you've got your heater, which is a diesel heater. So you need to make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in your main engine tank as they're on both different levels so you'll never be able to drain the tank fully of diesel with the heater because the engine intake is much lower. Middle button is off. To turn it on you just press the top one which is the wavy lines which look like heat and you get the red light. You'll also get a green light on the dashboard which tells you if you are using it when travelling which you can do, that the heater is on. And you can adjust the temperature here, the highest being 30 degrees. And then when the vehicle is up to temperature and you want to just recirculate the heat, or if you want to recirculate cold air in the summer, you can just press this button here and you'll get the blue light, which just means that the recirculation fan is on. Next week you have your ultra ultra store which is store water on gas so this is where the cover needs to come off on the outside of the vehicle you've got 30 to 70 degrees on here so you can adjust the temperature of your water and you'd simply just turn this down to here get the 
green light which means it's working and that will start to heat your 10 litres of water in your boiler. Inside, just underneath here, you have your electric side to your water heater, which is a fuse spur, and your electric side to your heater. But this is just a diesel heater on this, so you would just use the diesel heater to heat the vehicle. Your boiler's behind there, so that holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter, it's very important that you drain the vehicle free of water. So you drain your waste off from outside and you would drain your fresh off out from outside. And then the last thing you want to do is drain this boiler off because it holds 10 litres of water. You don't want it to get really cold inside the motorhome and we'll have a hard frost and for the water to freeze. So when it's lying down like so, this is holding water. So come in, no power, no pump on and lift it up and this will drain into this position and this will drain the 10 litres of water off directly out underneath the chassis. Leave that open during the time you've got the vehicle stood up and not in use. Open all the taps within the vehicle just to allow any water in the pipes to drain out and to stop any air from building up in the taps and pipework. And then when you come to reuse the van in the spring, shut this, shut your fresh new waste from outside, fill the vehicle with water via a hose pipe, Come in, put your 12 volt control panel on, put your pump on, go at the cold side of the tap first. You should get an automatic flow of cold water straight away because it's coming from the main tank underneath via the pump to the tap. Then go slowly round to the hot. It'll cough, splutter, spit air out. And that all that is doing is filling this boiler up. So it's transferring the water from underneath the van into this water container by pushing the air out through the taps until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap. This is when you know that your system is primed. Then do start off with the kitchen tap, then do the washroom tap, hand basin and shower tap. And then once you've got all the air out, out of the taps and the, you've got a free flow of water on all three taps, your system is then primed. But remember, drain this off because if you don't drain the water off, it's not covered under warranty and it's very expensive to replace any pipework, any boiler or any fresh or waste water tanks. So in the kitchen you've got three gas burners and then one electric hot plate which works when you're hooked up which is the back one. You have a grill, which is lit there. And an oven. You may want to take the grill pan and oven shelves out when traveling. And then one little handy tip to know is, if you put the oven or grill on, and it goes out straight away. All you need to do is respark the oven or grill, but keep the control valve pressed in for a couple of seconds until the thermocouple gets warm, and this will then allow the gas to continue to flow through the thermocouple because what's happening is when it's going out, the thermocouple isn't getting to temperature, so it's isolating the gas supply. Underneath, you've got some storage and a few spare for your electric hot plate. Cutlery drawer and some more storage. Pressing the buttons in, releasing the travel catch, you've got overhead storage and then some trays to store your cups and plates in. And as long as the pump's on, you'll get pressurised water. And then if you slowly make your way around to the hot, you're building up the pressure in the washroom. Building up the pressure in the boiler, should I say.
and just pushing the water and the air out until you get a steady flow of water. So give it a couple of moments. And there you go, once you get a pressurised flow of water on the hot side of the tap, the system is primed. So you now know what you're looking for when winterising and unwinterising the motorhome. You've got your fridge, which is a Dometic fridge. So it's three sources. So you've got gas, mains electric, and then battery. So the battery isn't just off the leisure battery. So don't think that the leisure battery will power the fridge because it won't. The fridge is too, takes too much of a consumption out of the battery for that to happen. So what you've got to do is the battery is kind of like a cool box setting. It only works when the engine is running. And if it's been pre-chilled beforehand at home, if you've had it on a day or two before, you've put your shopping in the night before, all your shopping's nice and cool, you put onto the battery and start travelling to your site. Or if you've travelled from one site to another, then put on the battery and the shopping will stay fresh. When you get a site, you'd use mains power, which is the one of the plug. And then you've got gas on the top, which you'd use if you're wild camping off your gas bottle. Temperature this side, so you can go from full temperature to half and a travel catch in the mo in the middle so you can shut the, the door and keep it locked when you're traveling and then when winterizing again or when not using it if you just take everything out give it a wipe out with some antibacterial spray or wipes and then shut the lock and just rest it up against the door and the frame this will allow air circulation in and out the fridge to stop mold and bacteria from forming in there if the door was to be closed also in the kitchen you've got this unit here and then on the side you've got a barrel so if you put your key in you can lock it for when you're traveling if you unlock it what you can do is you can pull the worktop extension out not only does it give you more worktop space this side, but it also gives you more storage through the back with your gas taps on the bottom. So these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. Any problems with gas, isolate the gas bottle to be safe, but you can't isolate the appliance if you think that there is a problem with it. So you've got your cooker, your fridge and your water heater on the bottom there. And then the end one is more than likely the external barbecue point. In the washroom, you've got your toilet to the left hand side. So to operate the toilet, press the blue button at the back, make sure the pump's on and you'll get the flush from the header tank. As you can see, it's a, a bit pink, which means that they've mixed pink with water, which is what you're meant to do and fill the header tank. Always flush first because it lubricates the seal between the blade and the toilet. And then before use, there's a grey lever here. Slide this to the left and open the blade. Use the toilet with it open so everything goes into the cassette. Flush after use. You can spray some ball cleaner in there, Fedford ball cleaner. And then slide back to the left. To shut it off. Get into the habit of doing it this way and shutting it off because if you don't, if you leave it open, you'll either have a mess when you drive the vehicle or when you try to pull it out the outside of the van to empty, it won't come out. So it's got to be closed to empty the cassette because you'll not be able to get it out the side of the vehicle. Got a toiletry cabinet here, a toiletry cabinet underneath the sink. The shower screens, your lights in your washroom are individually switched so you can put whichever one or both lights on together. And then you tap, you tap, instead of pulling it up to turn it on, you push it down. This is all the same on all auto sleepers and then 
you've got your hand base on top as well. And your pumps behind there. So fly screen at the top and blackout blind here. Clipped in the middle to depart the two. And then you do have a fly screen with a blackout blind on the skylight vent. Push both sides to open or you can tilt it whichever way you want depending on which way the wind's blowing to allow ventilation into your washroom. To operate your telly, your telly is a 240 volt TV so you need to be hooked up for this to work. And then each time you move site, you need to retune it. So if you get the remote, press menu, go down to auto tune in, press UK, and then it'll do an auto scan and it'll find as many channels as it can in your area. So just allow it to do its thing and it'll pick up the signals it can find. But in the wardrobe, you do have your TV aerial here and a booster. So this is a booster and an amplifier, so it's shown green, which means it's found the signal. Should be showing orange or red. Red means it hasn't got a signal. Orange means it's got a signal, but a very weak one. You can min and max the signal here, or you can loosen off the aerial, push the stem up, point it to where your fellow caravan and motorhomers are pointing their aerials on your site. And lock it in and use the little toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial on the roof but before travel always make sure it's pulled securely into the van and locked in so that the wind can't damage your aerial when you're traveling i've also got your carpets in here and your freestanding table and then behind you've got your trips for mains electric and you've got your 12 volt fuses which are listed what does what so this is your power distribution board which is your ec200 electrical control system so carry some spare blade fuses with you just in case one does go you can replenish the fuse at the back of the vehicle you've got your u-shaped lounge so you've got storage underneath if you lift up both sides leisure batteries in this corner here and then if you press the buttons in, so you've got two levers here, push them down, you'll be able to slide the bases forward. So you can slide one forward, use the back rest to go in at the back as it's got wooden supports on. To fit over the rail at the back and do exactly the same this side so slide that out in the back and there you have a double bed you can remove these side cushions to give you extra width to the back and then you've got a large double bed slash king size bed at the back of the van. So above the cab you do have your over cab bed. So what you can do is slide this out and it'll fold back to give you extra space to get in and out of the cab. And you've got a mattress there and a ladder that's in a cover there that just clips on here. So again, access up above into the over cab individual lights which are switched on both sides and you've got the same skylight as in the washroom so you can open that for ventilation in the summer but when you don't want it what you can do is you can just fold it over this is a great place to store things as well like things like extra bedding or clothing and fold that down and it just hooks in there so you can get more space instead of getting 
out and round you can come through the cab into the motorhome so now in the cab which is based on a mark 7 ford transit you've got your handbrake down to your right hand side to lock the doors on the cab you just press the lock button and that'll lock passenger and driver's door and unlock them driver and passenger electric windows mirror adjustment so you can choose between the driver or the passenger for the mirror adjustment and it'll just the top ones only the bottom one being the blind spot mirror you'd have to manually adjust you've got your headlight adjustment here and then to turn your headlights on that's off in the middle side lights on and your headlights pull it back to put your rear fog light on or turn it to the left hand side to put your park light on wipers indicators and your trip computer so you can go through here and view your outside air temperature average speed average fuel distance to empty being your range all through there and you can see your mileage and your trip how many miles you've done off the trip which to reset it you would just press and hold the end button cruise control on and off slow yourself down speed yourself up and if you've got to press off or you've got to put the brake on you can press resume to the last speed set before the engine was turned off you'll notice you've got your rear view camera there which is on permanently on your way go monitor but going into reverse on this you'd lift the collar and you can see the reverse camera as well which is the same camera ASP so you can turn your if you're skidding you can turn this off to stop the electric program stability control from kicking in hazards this is the little light I was on about so that will glow green when your diesel heater is on in the back temperature distribution and fan speed you push in for the air to work which is this green button here large glove box 12 volt radio which is FM AM and auxiliary so the auxiliary is in the top dashboard glove box which you lift the handle here to gain access fold these over and you've got two cup holders and then you do have another 12 volt here so if you're wiring in a sat nav or a dash cam you can put your cigarette lighter into here 